Okay, we fired a beam of particles into a detector, and one of them has come out uh, having lost some mass at a different angle and slowed down. Um, you think it's split in two, you want to work out where the other bit went. So, we've got a particle coming in, and mass M1, velocity V1, and then we get the detector, we don't know what happens in there, but you get it coming out with mass m2 and velocity v2, which is changed by an angle theta. Now presumably what's gone on is that we have a third particle, which is going off in some other direction. Let's say it's going off in this direction here, and this angle is phi. And it's got mass m3, which we know. Now, I don't actually know that the third particle is going this way. It could be going you know, that way or this way or something like that. Um, but I've just guessed an angle. If the angle comes out negative, that tells us it's going a different way. Okay. So what's going on here? This actually counts as a collision. A collision can involve things splitting up as well as joining together, as long as the interaction is quite short. In this case, it is. So, um, in all collision situations, whether it's collision joining things together or collision things breaking apart, momentum is conserved. So let's write down the momentum. Momentum horizontally, m1v1 equals m2v2, let's see, this is adjacent over hypotenuse cos theta plus m3 v3 cos phi. So that's horizontally, and vertically we have no initial vertical momentum. There's no vertical component here. So afterwards we have m2 v2 sine theta equals m3 v3 sine phi. Now we know everything here except v3, that's v3 and phi. So we have two unknowns and we have two equations. So we have enough to solve it. We don't need to worry about anything else. So how can we solve it? Well, we can re we need to eliminate one of phi or v3, so we can work out the other one. What's going to be the easiest way to do it? Well, it's pretty easy to arrange. This They both have a, a v3 and some angle of theta, which makes it um, a bit tricky. But we can rearrange both equations so that we have the uh, things we don't know on the same side. So if we rearrange the bottom equation, we have v3 sine phi equals m2 v2 sine theta over m3. And if you rearrange the top equation, we get v3 cos phi equals m1 v1 one minus m two v two cos theta all over m three. So how are we going to eliminate one of phi or v three? The obvious thing to do is to divide this by that. Then the v threes will cancel, and we'll have a tan phi equals this divided by that. So if we do the calculation, divide those two equations, we end up with tan phi equals this. The M3s cancel, and if you plug the numbers in with the calculator, you end up with this. So you take arctan, and you end up that phi equals 
3.6 degrees. And now we can substitute that back into the bottom equation on the previous slide, which was that V3 equals M2 V2 sine theta over M3 sine phi. And plugging that in, we get a value of 160 meters per second. So is this plausible? Um, if we look up here at this equ equation at the top, we can see it's got a mass and a velocity, mass and velocity, mass and velocity. So all the terms have masses and velocities. Um, so that's the same top and bottom cancels out. So this has no dimensions, which agrees because it's tan phi. So it's plausible from that point of view. The angles are small, which is also plausible. The velocity is reasonable. It just came in with 100, went out with 160, not too different. So the numbers look pretty much plausible, and the uh, um, dimensions of this equation up here look plausible. So, looks okay.